Don't mind the air conditioner, it's hot outside, I apologize. So this is Unstoppable Spread of Islam. This was a request, but it was also something I was, it's uh, on the channel Toward Eternity. I was going to do it last time when Muhammad, uh, Muhammad when Muhammad had uh, requested things after donating to the channel, he gave this channel. Uh, this was one of the ones I was going to do. I flipped the coin, and uh, I don't remember what other video it was now. One. So let's go ahead and do this video now, just because. When religion on the internet, you come across Islam. Sorry. Let me go back because I missed the very first words he said. Okay. When you search for the fastest growing religion on the internet, you come across Islam. Research that has been made in recent years has interestingly shown that result. We are talking about a community with a population of almost 2 billion, a quarter of the world's population. It's a much larger number than even the most populated country, China. On the one hand, it's the religion that is tried to be denigrated the most by the media. Muslims are people. Islam is yeah. an idea. Yeah. Islam is an idea. But... A bad idea. And on the other hand, it's the religion that people convert to the most. Can you imagine if someone had said uh, Christianity is an idea? Yeah, it's a terrible idea. Can you imagine the outrage? People would lose their mind. How dare they? Well, then you you can't say that and then like <gasps> clutch your pearls when somebody does the and says the exact same thing. Like that's what are you talking about? It goes two ways. It always does. People will seem to forget that a lot of times. There are two ways to a discussion. What you're saying is true to you, and what's coming back at you is true to the other person. And it's like some people will throw out an insult and then have the nerve to be upset that somebody else dished out an insult back at them. Like, I guess I got annoyed with that statement just, just because it's not a bad idea. If you don't agree with it, it doesn't mean it's a bad idea. It's just it's just stupid to say. Isn't it strange? We have an interesting picture before us. People telling the story of how they became Muslims in every corner of the internet. Celebrities who declare that they have become Muslims day by day. For example, Andrew Tate has been mentioned a lot recently. Islam is beautiful, and I felt differently inside since I've converted, and I think it has the solutions to a lot of the problems we're facing in the world today. Former Dutch politician Joram Van Klaveren. I decided to write an anti-Islam book, which started as an anti-Islam book, changed into this search for God, and it ended up me becoming a Muslim. <laughs> Former rock star Cat Stevens, now known as Yusuf Islam. Because when I started reading the Quran, one of the things that just I woke up to was the Quran is full of directives to make you think. Every year, we see an increase in the population of Muslims by thousands in non Muslim countries. It's not even possible to predict what will happen 50 years from now. One cannot really imagine. So, what is it that impresses so many people? What do they see that some of them become Muslims when they are so antagonistic as to be enemies of Islam? We have there's by the way I'm gonna say this and it's 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 obvious but not what he's saying it's obvious and that is that some people will never accept it care about it grasp onto it because it is not This is going to be controversial, but when me, I don't know who out there knows this, but I'm, I'm, I'm white. I know it stands out with the blue. I understand. But when you, th when I, as a kid thought about Islam, Muslims, I had a next door neighbor growing up. I've told stories about him. His name was Mustafa. Um, he had a brother, Kareem, his, his mom was Muna, and Kevin, oh my goodness, was it Kevin? It wasn't Keith. Oh my goodness, I just completely forgot his dad's name. That, his, that was his dad's American name. I think he was from Pakistan? But anyways, they were 
Muslim, as I, I didn't know that at the time. They were just, Mustafa was my friend. He was my neighbor. As I got older, my mom said, well, one Christmas in particular, I ran over to his house to share my Christmas gifts. Look what I have. We can play. What'd you get? He's like, I didn't get anything. And so I thought, he's a bad kid. Santa didn't bring him anything. Because Santa wasn't Christianity to me. We didn't, we didn't, as a family, we celebrated Christmas just because it was a giving time. We didn't celebrate it based on the the religious aspects of it. So I didn't understand why Santa wouldn't have... We, we were in townhouses or condos, however you want to call it. So we, we were side by side. Why would he come here? But he did not come here. It made no sense to me. Well, when they moved away and we ended up moving away, my mom said, well, he, he ended up getting a Nintendo for his Christmas, like the next year. And that was because they didn't understand why they weren't given gifts. And so later on, when I realized, oh, well, they're, it's a religious thing. And I was like, well, we're, we're not really religious so much. And we, we went to church, but then we stopped. And I didn't understand why. Like the difference, the whole, the whole thing didn't make sense. And my mom was like, well, they're from the Middle East. Um, and so they're Muslim. And so from there on, he wasn't white like me. He was, I guess you could say, olive or, or darker skin, but not black. So to me, Muslims were that. So getting back to the original point, and I do apologize, getting back to the original point of what I was saying, some people will never accept Islam, never accept being a Muslim and will fight back against it because to them Muslims and Islamic people are not white there is this perception in America by uh, Western countries and you'll see pictures of it hell I had a I had a picture of the face of Jesus um, I think it was was it in my room it had lights on it so it was like a night light and white guy like me long hair just like and you think he even had the little I'm sure some of you know can imagine this picture he had the the crown of thorns around his his head which is a, another thing that's odd to me why you would want that picture because that was when he was being tortured I wouldn't want if my mother had been murdered I would not want a picture on my wall of the assailant mid stab on my mother but that's beside the point we're just gonna throw that one out to the side but a lot of people will fight the conversion will will fight the um, anything Islam because to them it's not white it's a terrible thing to say but it's not white that's not everybody but the majority of people that you see talking about Jesus and they look like me and I mean this uh, it, it stops here because I like to think that I am a normal human being who tries to think about things and there's a switch on here that shut off and they are just batshit insane and not all some go to a, an extent and then they, they don't really cross that line where even they're just like I'm not saying that those people are a little crazy but there is and there will always be people who refuse to convert to a certain religion based on and I say convert if if that's what you want if that's what you believe if that makes you happiest then convert 
But if any one of you, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, if any one of you came to me and told me Scientology is the way to go, I will slap the nipples right off of your body. <laughs> I, I do not want to hear that. That is not true at all. Determined four important factors that affect people's decision of becoming Muslims. So what are they? Let's have a look at them together. Factor one. We have said above that Islam is the religion that has tried to be denigrated, undermined the most by the media. Despite all the defamation, the main reason for the new Muslims to convert to Islam is this. Those people managed to take the Quran and the Prophet ﷺ as references, not the media or the Muslims whose actions are not in line with Islam. They directly examined the life of the first student of the Quran and the person who practiced its decrees in the best way, the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. The person they see is a person who gained the trust of even his enemies. He had been with them since he was born and was known for his trustworthiness, his high moral values above everyone else. Not once was he found to have lied. He was known as al Amin, meaning the trustworthy. This name was given to him before prophethood by the very people who will later become enemies of Islam. But when he became a prophet, a much worse form of Islamophobia than today began to appear. Both Prophet Muhammad and those who believed in him were persecuted and subjected to all kinds of insults. But Islam had a tremendous influence. Despite all the persecution and efforts of deterrence, the number of people that were becoming Muslims did not decrease. On the contrary, it increased. As those who read... I just also want to say, when the Prophet Muhammad had, I almost said converted, uh, the companions around him, and I've said this before, were perfect because they knew him. And so when he came forward with everything, there were so many that were just like, is that what he said? Yeah, then it's he's telling the truth. If that, if that's what he's saying is a religion, is the true way of living, blah blah blah. Yep, I back him. And I mean, you have to have some people who you have really shown yourself to be a high quality, trustworthy. Just excuse me, just overall good person. I burped a little bit, so I apologize. You have to have have really shown them that you're a, a, a good character person for them to have heard this and and instead of going what they were like yeah they they just doubled down on everything he said they were like don't know i didn't hear it from him i'm hearing it from you but he's telling the truth and you're just you, you could not have had a better group of people instead of having somebody who was just like okay look he's my friend but I think he's making it up. You don't hear that from any of those people. They instantly were like, mm-hmm. Yeah, what's your problem to where you think he's lying? Because I can tell you, everything about him tells me that he's not capable of, of being that person to tell these lies and everything. Because look at his history. His history shows that he's a straight-up guy. As they said back then, that's a straight up dude. That's what they said about him. You can quote me on that. Just don't don't quote me on that. Let his life know they resorted to everything to dissuade him, to make him give up preaching this religion. They once offered him to make him the wealthiest person and the leader of the Meccan society and marry the most beautiful women if he gave up his cause. He oh, refused wow. them by giving the following answer, which went down in history. If they put the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left hand, I would not give up this religion and preaching it. Either Allah will make this religion dominant or I will sacrifice my life for this cause. He did not have any financial gain in this mission. On the contrary, he spent all his assets on his cause and he lived the rest of his life in poverty. They sometimes try to put nicknames such as liar, magician, imposter and self-seeker for him so that people wouldn't believe him, but it didn't work because the attitudes and actions of the Prophet and everything in his life were obvious. He couldn't have been such a verse. In the first years, yeah. a three-year boycott was applied to him and the believers. When no one was allowed to sell them food, he lost his beloved ones and relatives. When he went to invite people in the region called Taif to Islam, 
he was stoned all the way and was drenched in blood. Other times, he even tied a stone over his stomach because of hunger. He experienced unparalleled hardships in his 23 years of prophetic life. When he went to conquer Mecca, where he had been persecuted, years later, he was humble enough to bow his head and be merciful enough to forgive those who had wronged him. Those who believe in him think like this. That's a better person than me, because I don't think I could have done that. When they read his life. A person who lived such a life cannot be a liar in his cause. And if this person is a liar, there cannot be any truthful person in the world. They accept his prophethood by thinking like that. The more they learn about his life, the more they admire him. Factor 2. If someone is to accept an idea, what does he do first? He asks questions, right? If he finds it logical, he accepts the idea. It holds true for religion as well. People want answers to questions about faith. But there are some issues that are incomplete in all religions that cannot be explained and that are not found reasonable. There is a general acceptance like this. Religion is an issue. I, and I said this, I do apologize for, for pausing. I'm not trying to ruin the video or what he's saying. I'm trying to add to it. I said in another video, and somebody said it was very profound, and it kind of hit me later on when I rewatched it. And I was like, wow, yeah. There are things in life and even in religion, faith, belief, that don't make sense. There are things that don't seem possible. But your not your job isn't to hey, your job isn't to make it make sense you know it's like if you opened up a book to a page and the you, you got let's say a thousand words on this page and 400 of them were missing and they're all missing in the center this big it's almost like somebody cut that out as you're reading it and you go through and you're you're now you're just trying to make sense of what does what's what was missing here that's not your job to, to understand what's missing. Your job is to just, this is what you have to, it's it's basically like, this is, this is what you have to comprehend. This middle part, it's not for you. And you, you just have to accept that it may not make sense to you, but it does make sense to something else. Much like you get it, the next page is full of all the words you need to read, section could be missing for something else. Like, it's, you just have to comprehend what you're, not what you're told, but you just have to comprehend what's there and know that something is missing, but understand that it's not missing. In the grand scheme of things, it's there but you can't see it yet. You can't op understand it, comprehend it. I've already kind of said this stuff before, but yeah, it, 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 it does, it makes it easier to understand religion when I look at things that way. I'm going to shut up probably for about 30 seconds. Issue related to the heart. It's not an issue of logic. Believe it and move on. Don't question it. But one religion is exceptional and that is Islam. Yes. No religion other than Islam can give answers this clearly to the questions to be asked. The witness of this is the volumes of books written throughout the 1400 years of Islamic history and answering the questions that have been asked. The Risale Nur Tafsirs written in the last century are one of the best examples of it with the determinations based on intellect and heart. While no other religion is based on evidence, Islam is proven with dozens of evidence. Even if you simply type on YouTube or Google, you can easily read some of them. Many verses of the Quran and Hadith always encourage people to use logic and learn knowledge, science. In order to understand that Islam is the most logical religion, it's enough to look at the most fundamental issue in the belief system, the belief in Allah. Islam is the religion with the clearest explanation about the Creator. While no other belief system mentions the characteristics of the Creator in a complete way, in Islam, he is mentioned with his attributes along with his works of creation in the universe. 
and he is introduced in detail. How can a religion be expected to be true if it cannot give clear information about the creator or if it's okay with using a term such as unknown energy? Even if you use that as the only criterion, only a few religions remain. And logical fallacies and logical errors can be seen in the explanations of all of them except Islam. Islam gives us the definition of a deity with infinite power and no weakness. In other words, Islam, unlike other religions, does not make a mistake in belief in Allah. It always makes the most correct definition. Then we say, I wonder if this religion is the religion sent by Allah. In other words, can the entity who introduces himself in the Quran be the creator of the universe? Factor 3. The other important reason is that 1400 years ago, Islam brought definite solutions to the problems that are still not solved today. We will give three basic examples. For example, there are serious problems with unity and brotherhood among people. Even when we look at the last century, we see the issue of racism, which caused the death of millions of people. Those deaths continue even today. The murders, oppressions, and persecutions of many racist groups such as the Ku Klux Klan are seen in the historical records. Sometimes those racist acts were made directly by the state, such as the Nazi-era Germany and China. No need to go far. We can look at this picture. It was taken in Brussels in 1958. If you write human zoo on the internet, you will see similar photos. They keep African black people in cages and show them to people as if they are animals. Look at these people. Do they look like they are having a lot of fun? Isn't what they do to this kid humiliating enough? It's not just about Brussels. There were human zoos beginning from the 1900s until that time in the countries such as the USA, France and Germany. But they are developed and civilized countries. They wouldn't do such things, right? Let's see how Islam, which they call backward, looks at the issue. O oh, mankind, indeed we have created you from male and female and made you peoples and tribes that you may know one another. Indeed, the most noble of you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous of you. Indeed, Allah is knowing and acquainted. It is stated in the Quran that so many different races were created so that they will get to know one another not oppress one another. He who calls people to racism is not from us. He who fights for racism is not from us. He who dies because of racism is not from us. We are talking about a religion that says so. It is a religion that does not favor any race over the other, while the same mistake has been observed all over the world throughout history. Every year during the pilgrimage season, Hajj season, people from all races, colors, and languages wear the same clothes and worship side by side without any sign of superiority or wealth. Islam shows the vision from 1400 years ago that today's civilization still doesn't have. One of the other biggest issues that Islam has brought a solution to is hunger and poverty. It brings the solution and at the same time mandates people to do it. It builds a bridge between rich and the poor and calls it zakat, alms. Islam has introduced a certain limit for being considered rich. A person who has wealth above that limit gives away 1 40th, 2.5% of his wealth to the poor, no matter how much wealth he has. On the one hand, the needs of the poor are met, and on the other hand, the bonds of brotherhood are strengthened. The rich cannot look down on or stay away from the poor, and the poor don't envy or hold a grudge against the rich. On the contrary, they get closer, both solving the financial problem and ensuring brotherhood. Moreover, there are... If you're poor in that scenario, you can't get mad at the people that are feeding you, giving you clothing and everything like that because that's the wealthy. So how do you get mad at somebody who's helping you? You'd be a jerk. Yeah. And of course, it, it would probably be extra special if you're born into poverty and you come out of it. As they say in America, you pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You come out of it. You end up becoming something with your sorry there's a desk right here with another computer and I'm resting my foot on it and it's shaking so that's that sound you're hearing but you come up out of poverty you you get a good job and you end up making some money you are going to not feel burdened with having to give your money to help people because you're looking at it like I know exactly what it feels 
exactly what it feels. I know exactly what it feels like to be in this situation. And if I made it, then I'm going to put my money into it. And I want these people to know the, the donations that you're, that you're getting are from somebody who was in the exact situation you were in 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. I was born into that. And look what I've, I've come up to. So when you're, when you're getting this, this help, know you're getting this help from somebody who is showing you a way out of it. And I mean, those people are going to look to you as an example. And they're, they're looking to you as an example of what to be, like the, the moves to make to get out of it. They're not looking at you as a jealous aspect of, oh, I wish I had that money. You know what I mean? That's respectful. Are many important examples of it in history. During the period of the Anatolian Seljuk state, Seljuk Sultanate of Rum, the zakat ships had to be sent to Africa because there were no people poor enough to receive zakat in the entire Anatolia. Yes, to Africa which has been colonized by the enemies of Islam. In some other countries where Islam was really practiced, the rich had difficulty in finding people to give zakat after a while because the financial gap between them was closed with zakat and charity. The person who received zakat was later coming to the level of giving zakat. Modern culture, yeah. on the other hand, cannot bring a good solution to this extent. On the contrary, it creates a huge gap that makes the poor poorer and the rich richer with the interest system. The interest system, the riba system, says to people, you will work and I will earn money from your labor by doing nothing. I will make you go through hardships. While there are countless lives being destroyed by interest for years, Islam solves this problem by prohibiting riba 1400 years ago. We can give more examples like that. It's one of the things that makes Islam different and unique. What other religion is so involved in life there is no issue Islam doesn't touch. It touches hearts as well as minds. It touches the family as well as the society. In fact, factor four is exactly this. It doesn't stay within the walls of the place of worship. It is not just a religion that is lived in the heart. It addresses the whole world and all areas of life. It's another fundamental point that attracts the attention of Muslim converts. We see lessons and recommendations on dozens of different issues in the Quran and the Prophet's own words, that is, in the hadiths. Besides, they are not simple recommendations that become obsolete, old-fashioned over time. They are all recommendations that preserve their freshness, used and needed for 1400 years. The Prophet ﷺ did not only say them, he also showed examples of them by practicing them. In what fields does he give lessons? Shall we have a look at some examples? Other than the issues of worship, all legal issues with enough details to run a state, learning knowledge, science and reasoning, trade and commerce, economy, state administration and diplomacy, communication with people, hospitality, being a good neighbor, friendship, taking care of relatives, marriage and family affairs, raising children, protecting and taking care of the orphans, helping the poor and needy, taking care of patients and patients' own motivation, sports, all the problems caused by the tongue, leadership and teamwork, cleaning in every detail, spiritual upbringing and maturity, history, at the same time the news given about the future that turn out to be true. We can list other areas as well. Do you know what the other interesting thing is? The period we are talking about is the 600s and the people that are doing these is only one person. And that one person is someone who didn't even learn to read and write as his friends and enemies witness. While one person can be a model for people in only a few areas, it is something unparalleled that an unlettered person can be a model in so many areas and address every era, every period. That's why the famous historian and astrophysicist Michael Hart, who wrote The Hundred, a ranking of the most influential persons in history, put the Prophet Muhammad in the first place in his book. Explaining the reason for it, he states the following. My choice of Muhammad to lead the list of the world's most influential persons may surprise some readers and may be questioned by others. But he was the only man in history who was supremely successful on both the religious and secular level. This is the thing that those who become Muslims while reading about his life notice. What they see is a religion that touches every aspect of life not just a religion that is lived in the heart and in the place of worship, and it has shown its universality 
by preserving its freshness for 1400 years. Among the ones who could notice it is the former politician Joram Van Klaveren, whom we interviewed. He wanted to write an anti-Islam book because he knew Islam as it was portrayed by the media. As he researched Islam, he started to realize the facts like the four basic items that we talked about. As a result, the journey that started with an anti-Islam purpose ended in becoming a Muslim. That is the brief answer to the question why people become Muslims. As people continue to research, read the life of the Prophet ﷺ, and notice what he brought to people, the number of converts to Islam will increase even more. As a great Islamic scholar said, be hopeful. Among the revolutions of the future, the loudest sound will be the sound of Islam. Wow, that was, a, that was kind of fast. That video was kind of fast. I think I unpaused it at like the four minute mark or five minute mark and it was just like wow it's a good video I don't know who the guy is who does that but I he was he's been in a, in a couple of those that I've seen and I don't know I like him it was good okay so let's see if they have it yep they have a little thanks button that's what mine looks like same size and everything I swear so, so you can click on that. <laughs> you can click on that and donate to the channel. Um, if you do donate, it's much appreciated. Um, give me some uh, video requests. They'll go right to the top. If you don't want to, you can't, whatever. No harm, no foul. Uh, but if you're not subscribed, click the button it's free you just do that and if you're not if you are subscribed then hit the thumbs up that's what i was going to say hitting the thumbs down will get you assassinated per youtube rules i don't make it up that's just that's what they say they get you assassinated you'll be you'll be murdered by a duck with a motorcycle body and it's on fire. It's got a sword. And it's dragging a chain connected to an alligator head with King Kong body. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Basically a Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna just gonna end this here. I'm not gonna rationalize stupidity. All right, we're going to end this here. So until next time, have a good day. Have a good night.